Let us go to the vineyard, my love, to see if the vines are in bloom. If the vines have opened to blossom new life, so As the flowers send forth their fragrant perfume, so the doors of my love shall be opened. For I have stored up my treasure for you, and now I give. I want is to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and to share in his sufferings by reproducing the pattern of his death. Becoming a Holy Rosary Sister is very special to me. It isn't safe. It involves taking a risk and breaking new ground. It's reaching out to other people and really helping them to help themselves. Our order was founded by risk takers and Holy Rosary sisters are still taking risks and will continue to do so. One risk taker is Sister Nora McNamara, coordinator of the Diocesan Development Services in Igalaland, Northern Nigeria. The philosophy of the DDS is very much the philosophy of the Holy Rosary congregation and that is to help people to help themselves, to become self-sufficient and self-reliant. A farmer's council is a group of 10 to 25 farmers. It is a primary group and it is based on the traditionally gala meeting called the Oja. We have adapted the traditional meeting to meet farmers' needs. So what we are doing is simply building on what exists in the society already. The Diocesan Development Services have developed many self-help programs and projects. The work ranges from seed research to water projects, from health care to agricultural education and seed multiplication farms. With the active participation of local farmers, the DDS, using the techniques of on-farm adaptive research, have improved many varieties of crops, including cassavas, cow peas, maize and groundnuts. These new improved seeds are then made available to all farmers in the community. In this region, women play an active role in agriculture. They plant and harvest most of the rice crop and take responsibility for processing the maize crop. This maize processing came about when a group of women approached and asked for help in setting up a small mill. The women raised enough money to purchase a mill and with the help of the DDS, set in motion the milling of maize into flour. The project was a success and the concept of local milling spread. Now there are over 20 mills dotted across the region, all organized and managed by women. Another of the programs directed specifically at women and organized by Sister Nora is the Tailoring and Seamstress Apprenticeship Scheme. Located in Ankpa, 
Apprentices from all over the region are given courses in basic tailoring and sewing. Standards are high, and upon successful completion of the course, the women are given a loan to purchase the necessary equipment to set themselves up in business in their own community. Without prayer, I simply wouldn't be able to keep going. I need that very special time to reflect. This hospital in Nyangba has been upgraded from a clinic to full hospital status. It now has a full complement of doctors, nurses and equipment. Holy Rosary sisters run and staff this modern hospital. Of particular concern is the care and rehabilitation of physically handicapped children and adults. Many children are referred for treatment to centres and hospitals throughout the state. This programme gives new hope and meaning to both children and parents. Risk-taking in South Africa is of a different nature than in Nigeria. In South Africa, Holy Rosary sisters are a counter-witness to the apartheid system. They stand with the people in their struggle for justice, dignity and human rights. Through their various ministries, the sisters reach out to the people in solidarity and support. They give, and indeed receive hope, in this troubled country. Well, as Holy Rosary Sisters, we are a missionary congregation. Um, we want to help other people in whatever way we can, and to be with them, and to show them, even within even the whole system of apartheid, where there is inhumanity, one person to another, that God's love is there and it's very real and somehow or another through our um, being with them and working with them and being close to them we are as it were trying to incarnate this love through ourselves so it is very worthwhile especially when you see people who are grateful in the sense I don't mean handing out things but grateful in the sense that you respect them their dignity for who they are as people and that you form a relationship with them and that's very important and they realize they are important as people and it's very satisfying for oneself as well in this area. The mission of the Holy Rosary Sisters is not only that of helping people to help themselves, for people are not always able to help themselves. Part of the great tragedy of Africa are the famines of Ethiopia and the refugees that flood daily into Sudan. The need here is for relief work. When we have the children coming for the feeding program, uh, we will have this number. And if they don't come for a certain period of time, we know where to go to find out why and what's happened to them, if, they've, if they're sick and can't come or why. Sister Terry Shields is a Holy Rosary sister. She returned to Africa when she learned of the starving children in refugee camps in Sudan. She joined a team, building and organizing feeding stations in this area. Tomorrow will be identification, really, of, of how, how bad the kids, you know, what the situation is nutritionally. We'll do a rough screening on them, and the children that are moderately bad will be given supplementary feeding. The kids that are really bad will have therapeutic feeding. Wad Sheriff is the largest and the most desperately needed feeding station in Sudan. In only a few days, the team has built a shelter where thousands of starving children will be able to get food. They work round the clock to get it done quickly, spending many frustrating hours on the small details like wiring mats and mixing food, finding water and hiring enough people to make it all work. Like hundreds of other children here, Hisson has become a master of suffering. Since birth, he has been dying. Totally malnourished. Lack of food, lack of protein, lack of covering. This is just because of not enough food. Hisson has grown old, waiting on someone to help. 
7.5. People will say, what's it like? And you'll tell them a few things, and then conversation changes. It's hard to explain to people. It's hard to explain to yourself, too, you know, when you see this and try to figure out why. Wherever the need is, Holy Rosary sisters are. And when the need moves, so too do the sisters. The response is to the need. In the shanty towns of São Paulo, Brazil, the Holy Rosary sisters live and work in solidarity with the poor, the oppressed and the powerless. These Holy Rosary sisters are part of a team who are trying to build up basic communities from the inside. A basic community is in some ways like a small parish, and in some ways it is like a cooperative. It's like a parish because its inspiration is Christian, and it's like a cooperative because it shares expenses, ideas and resources among its members. This basic community at San Mateus buys food in bulk and distributes it to its members. This saves 30% in food costs, but more importantly, it has taught the people to trust one another with their money. This basis of trust is an essential foundation for their community. It's really extraordinary when I think of the church I came from and the church in which I'm now working. Because the lady here are really in control. They do everything themselves. The celebration you were at the other night, for instance, those lay people had prepared it, they prepared the readings, they prepared what they were going to say, they prepared the music, everything. So a priest, if he wants to or needs to get away for a course or something, he's no worry, he doesn't have to think of getting somebody else in from the next parish to say his mass, because the laity just take over. They know what to do and they have the total confidence. And it's not just in liturgy, in the, in the celebra celebrations of word, for instance, that we have. The church over there that we're building at the moment, in, here in Villa Progresso, the lady have done all of that, the plans, how they want it, what size, the colours, everything, they do themselves. How do they get the money together in a poor area like this? Again, the generosity, the big miracle that we have, but they do it. Maybe a brick by brick, but eventually it gets built and it's theirs, and they've been in it right from the word go. So you have the sense of belonging to a really vital church where the bishop and the priest and the sister and the lady, are, they're all one. You're part of a team and you really feel that this is church, this is what it's all about. People building together and in the situation we're in, which is an unjust situation, where you get the sense of togetherness and people really fighting against injustice, it's fantastic. It's, it's a marvellous sense of what church really is all about. The novitiate in Insuka, southern Nigeria, is the Holy Rosary Sisters' formation centre for the whole of West Africa. Here, young women prepare to become Holy Rosary Sisters over a period of three years. In the novitiate training, emphasis is put on the spiritual and human development of the future missionary sisters. Many years ago, the first Holy Rosary sisters arrived in Onitsha as young missionaries. Today, these Holy Rosary sisters too are aware of their missionary calling. I want to be a Holy Rosary sister because they are missionaries. And I want to be a missionary, to be sent outside my culture to serve people and to serve God. 
The goal of novitiate training is to help the novices develop a personal relationship with Christ. This is achieved through prayer, study and reflection. The young novices become familiar with the way of life of the sisters and are prepared to be sent on mission. Today, Nigerian Holy Rosary sisters are on mission not only in Nigeria, but also in Kenya, Sierra Leone, Zambia, Ethiopia and Cameroon. So when I came in contact with the Holy Rosary sisters, I found out that they met the deepest desire of my heart. Secondly, the Holy Rosary sisters were very simple and filled with joy. There was no need for you to pretend you are at home with them. I believe life is a celebration and I get the most out of life when I part with old friends and meet new ones and the challenges involved in making friends and parting with them and the joys and pains answer my deepest needs. In a remote hospital in Autum, Kenya, the Sisters of the Holy Rosary are at work with the people of the Pokot tribe. Their mission here is to bring medicine to a part of the world where more than one quarter of all children die before the age of five and where adult life expectancy is 40 years. Gastroenteritis, measles and TB are widespread. So too is pneumonia. The hospital is a busy place, particularly when the doctors fly in. Then, over 30 operations could take place in two short days. In our hospital, in our tomb, in West Pocot, we serve a very needy people who have to come a long distance to the hospital. They are suffering from TB, Calazar, malaria, gastroenteritis and pneumonia. We also have a preventative medicine and curative. We have a mobile team which serves eight outstations and they are visited twice in the month. And the patients there are given vaccinations and antenatal care. The preventative medicine is for teaching the patients how to care for their children and basic medicine and how to deal with um, babies who have gastroenteritis, how to make up the fluids if they're dehydrated so that they don't have to be bringing them into hospital for the beginning unless they really need hospital admission. One of the great hopes of this region is the Community Health Workers program. Community health workers are trained at the hospital in the basics of hygiene, disease prevention, vaccinations and in recognizing the symptoms of the most common diseases. The workers then go to their own region and communities and bring a greater awareness of medicine to their own people. Community health workers also encourage people to attend the mobile clinics to get the children vaccinated against TB and other diseases. The effect of the health workers is that most children in many regions have been vaccinated against the most common diseases. The work is hard and arduous. Running a hospital without electricity or a permanent doctor is a difficult and demanding task. But then, being a Holy Rosary sister is not easy. The founder of the Holy Rosary Sisters was Bishop Joseph Shanahan. He too was a risk taker. His vision of all people sharing the divine life of God was and is the inspiration for the missionary thrust of the Holy Rosary Sisters. Some sisters still have vivid memories of Bishop Shanahan. There still postulants and uh, Bishop Shanahan came and uh, I was astonished. We, uh, we were walking around the garden and uh, he came along and joined us. And uh, we walked around the garden, the small garden, Kilishandra, for a good while. And he talked to all of us. He, uh, he gave me the feeling, certainly, that um, got the feeling that he was the most Christ-like person I had ever met. That was his, uh, his way. He made us feel that uh, we had uh, something very important to contribute in Africa. In 1928, the first Holy Rosary Sisters set sail for Africa. 
seven sisters were going out together. It was the first big set going to Nigeria, and it filled his heart with joy. He came to the other Holy Ghost Fathers and himself came to the North Wall with us, but he traveled over with us to Liverpool, and he blessed us. It was the first time many of us had been on a boat, I think. And he, he told us that he would always turn towards Africa and bless us, and he would bless the seas that we would travel on. The whole atmosphere that he created spoke more than his words, that you just felt a, a God there and a, all nature. You know, you felt part of the whole creation and you were doing your part in it. And that tradition continues to this very day. Sister Lucy, a Nigerian sister, makes her final profession in Ireland. As always, friends, families and benefactors give their total support. In the spirit of our founder, Bishop Shanahan, may she bring glory to your name by sharing the good news of your saving love. Holy Rosary sisters continue to bring their joy and their vision of Christ to people throughout the world. From feeding stations in Sudan to an isolated hospital in Kenya, from the struggling majority in South Africa to the industrious women of Nigeria, the Holy Rosary Sisters find their mission helping people to help themselves. It isn't easy, it isn't comfortable, but it is rewarding and it is the work of God. In the words of Bishop Shanahan, open wide your heart wide as the heart of Christ, bring in the whole world.